Hi guys, and welcome back to Mind the Leaves. If this is your first time with us, then welcome. We're really excited that you're here. Today we are talking house plants, 101 care tips. So whether you're new to plants or you already have quite a few, these tips should help you get them to thrive. Let's get started. Let's kick this off with some watering advice. Now you might not think about it too much, but the temperature of the water that you're using on your plants actually does matter. So try to use room temperature water or even slightly warm water rather than just cold water straight out of the tap or some really hot water. I don't know why you would do that, but plants can actually get shocked and damaged by really cold or really hot water temperatures. Their roots just don't like it. And I mean, think about our house plants. A lot of them are tropical plants, right? So they definitely wouldn't be used to having really cold water on their roots. So keep it room temperature. Do your best to make and keep a consistent watering schedule. Although I have to say some plants aren't too picky, there are quite a few that really hate inconsistent watering. For example, my Pilea peperomioides really hates inconsistent watering. It likes to be watered on the same day of the week every week. And I've noticed that if I deviate from that even slightly, I could see yellow leaves at the bottom. But when I keep it consistent, it is super happy. My advice is to just pick a day of the week where you're going to water all of your plants. So that's going to be your watering day. At least it's going to be your bulk watering day because some of your plants, of course, are going to be watered only every other week. And then you might have some plants that need to be watered twice a week, but make sure that you have that bulk consistent watering. And then you just have a few plants that you're moving outside of that. Keeping that consistency is going to keep things easier for you and healthier for your plants. Don't forget to make sure that your plant pot has drainage holes. Even if you keep it in a cute little cash pot for look, make sure that you have drainage holes at the bottom of your pot so that water can flow freely out of it. It's important to remember that most house plants really don't like to have wet feet. And what that means is that there's no excess water hanging out at the bottom of the roots. So if you've got your plant in a cute little cash pot and you just watered it in the cash pot, but you didn't empty the cash pot out, your plant might be extremely unhappy because it is sitting in water. Same thing goes for a saucer. So make sure that after you've watered that you're emptying those out so that you don't expose your plant to too much water. Honestly, probably some of the best advice that I could possibly give somebody who wants to get into houseplants or get better at it is to understand the biggest killer of houseplants is overwatering. Most of us love to care for our plants. We're plant people, we're nurturers. We want to go around with our little watering can and give them some love. But the truth is, is sometimes we need to rein in the love a little bit. Sometimes we need to understand that most of our plants like to have their soils dry out or at least a little bit dried out before they're watered again. If you're finding that you're killing a lot of easy to care house plants, it's probably because you're just giving it too much love. A lot of plants thrive on neglect. So I know it's counterintuitive, but try to be more neglectful. Now, of course, underwatering still kills plants and it happens all the time. But I feel like with underwatering, we kind of understand what we did wrong there. It flops down, triples up, goes completely dry. There's no real mystery as to why we killed that plant. But with overwatering, it can be so confusing because you think you're doing everything right, you're giving it water, you're giving it love, and for some reason, it just keeps dying. Now, something that I really want to point out is that overwatering doesn't necessarily mean that you've physically given your plant too much water in terms of the amount of water that you're giving it. So people think, oh, I don't want to overwater a plant, so I'm just going to give it maybe, I don't know, like a half a cup of water every week. That's actually not a good route to go. Measuring out how much water to give a plant really isn't actually as effective as you might think. The most important thing to do with plants is to make sure that you're watering them completely thoroughly. And that means using more water than the plant actually needs to hold in the soil, because you wanna make sure that you're going around the entire plant, all of the soil, soaking it all through so that all of the roots are becoming evenly moist. And it's really tough to do that 
if you're just giving it a half a cup because that's how much water it needs. What you need to do is just water it, give it a good deep soak so that all of the water is flowing freely out of the drainage holes. Then you know you've thoroughly given it a good watering and then you just need to wait for the soil to dry out or whatever your specific plant prefers. But the key thing here is that overwatering doesn't mean you've actually given too much water in terms of a quantity of water. Overwatering is when we're not allowing the soil to dry out enough. So it has more to do with the frequency of which we water than it does the actual amount of water that we give every time we water. This is a big one. Understand the needs of your individual plants. Yes, when we think about plants, we think that they need water and sunlight, but all plants are different. Perfect. So it's best to go on to Google and see if you can find out what your plant really wants. Does it want direct sun? Does it hate direct sun? Does it want a lot of water? Does it not want a lot of water? Prayer plants. Bright indirect light. Crap. Crap, 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 crap. Perfect. And it's not a bad idea to understand the plants that you're looking for before you go out and buy some plants. And the types of plants that you're looking for should be based on the types of conditions you have in your home. So for example, there's lots of plants that I might like to grow like palms, but I just don't have a south facing window. Actually I do, but it's just right next to a building. So it's just bricks. I actually don't get any direct sunlight through those windows. So even though I'd love to, I can't bring home any palms, but let's say I didn't really know anything about houseplants and my very first houseplants that I brought into my space were a couple of palms. I set them up, I think they look great, and then they just start dying and dying and dying, and then I assume that I have a black thumb. I don't have a black thumb, I just need to understand my plant and the conditions that I can provide it. You know, there's a lot of great houseplants out there that are super easy care, absolutely beautiful, not picky plants when it comes to water, humidity, all this kind of stuff. If you're interested in those, check this video out. I've got a full video on easy houseplants, but some plants are picky. And frankly, some of the beautiful ones that you'll be extremely attracted to in the shops will actually be very finicky, very picky plants. They might require high humidity. They might require rain, distilled or filtered water. And if collecting rainwater and trying to get your humidity up really high in your home doesn't sound like fun to you, then I would steer away from those plants and tailor your indoor jungle to the conditions that you actually have. No, we're not throwing in the towel, we're using the towel. It's so important to clean your leaves. Clean the dust off of your leaves and also clean your windows and any glass containers that your plants might be in, like air plants. Because if you are like me and you already don't have ideal lighting conditions, then you don't want anything to get in the way. So any dust or gunk on your windows, get rid of that, let the light shine through clean your leaves so that they can optimize the sun that you do have. Make sure to check your plants regularly for pests. I like to do this every time I water and I bulk water once a week. So at least once a week, I'm doing a really good look over of all of my plants under the leaves, making sure there's no spider mites, thrips, mealybugs, aphids, anything like that. And to be honest, if you see a bug, what? Don't freak out, it's okay. Why? <laughs> Honestly, bugs just happen. But if you're on top of it and you're checking every week, they're never gonna get out of control. If you're finding it hard to see what's really going on in your plant, I recommend bringing it to a window and using some natural sunlight. That's going to illuminate it the best so you can really see what's going on there. If you wanna save yourself some serious heartache when it comes to bringing in new plants and then potentially have pests, just quarantine your new plant. So you might be like me where you have a lot of plants around your home and if you just brought in one infested plant, it could seriously wreak havoc. So the best thing to do is to take your new plant and keep it 
quarantined probably for a, a week, maybe even two, because what can happen is sometimes there are eggs either in the soil or potentially even embedded in some leaves, and then after maybe about a week, they'll hatch. And even though the plant looked so perfect, so healthy, you checked every single leaf before you even brought it home, bugs. This can happen. So put your plant away for a week, maybe even two if you can, just to make sure there are no pests that are going to surprise you. Most plants do benefit from the use of fertilizer, but especially if you're new to that plant, what I recommend is to dilute whatever fertilizer you're using by about half or even a quarter strength. That way when you use it, the chances are very small that you're going to burn or damage your plants. You might have noticed that in your home, your house plants tend to lean towards the light source, usually your window. Don't worry, that happens to all of us. All you gotta do is give it a quarter turn rotation every few days or so, or maybe even once a week, depending on how fast they grow. That way they will keep a nice upright growth rather than just a wonky over to your window kind of growth. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I've said this before throughout this video, but actually the best plant tip that I can give somebody is if a plant dies, don't sweat it. Why? Listen, house plants die. It sucks. I can't even tell you the number of house plants that I killed when I was first getting into the game years ago. It's actually pretty embarrassing. But to be honest, a lot of the time, it's not that we have a black thumb, it's that we're either just lacking some knowledge that could be really useful to us, or our conditions are terrible. I used to live in a basement apartment, and I would constantly bring plants home and try to get them to grow in my house, and a lot of them would just die, and it was extremely sad. But I just didn't have the sort of conditions that most plants want. But at the same time, I learned a lot through that experience. So don't sweat it if you kill something, even if it's a plant that you really want to grow, but you've killed it like three times. Hey, now the fourth time's the charm, right? Give it another go. It's a learning experience. It's a journey. It's a process. Do you know how many string of pearls I've killed? I don't even want to tell you. It's embarrassing. <laughs> a lot. If this video was helpful for you, please go ahead and plant your finger on that like button and go ahead and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss a single video. Thank you so much for being here with me today. It's been a lot of fun. All right, those are the houseplant care tips. I really hope that they were helpful for you. If you implement some of these, I know that they will absolutely help you in your journey. My name's Sam, this is my Leaves, and until we see each other again, take care of your plants and yourself.